action. How do you view, that was a long lead in to just ask the question, how do you en uh, envision or view the interest rates of today and the monetary balancing, policy balancing that the Fed is doing on contributing to the future generation predicament if we are to extrapolate um, the conditions of today? So the, um, our job, of course, is the whole economy and inflation for the whole economy. And the absolute best thing we can do for younger people is to restore price stability so that as we benefited from, you know, I, I graduated from college in 1975, near the end of the big inflation period. So during most of my adult life, inflation has just been not a factor. And that means, you know, stable interest rates, relatively low interest rates. We want to get back to that. And that's, that is what the Fed's job is, is that we're not we're not supposed to look at the housing market as separate from the, of the overall economy. In the meantime, though, there's no question that higher interest rates are making it harder to buy homes in the, in the short term. Uh, but in the longer term, this is the best thing, for, particularly for younger people who are not yet in the housing market. Let me um, sort of in line with that um, community, constituency, population, and definitely aligned um, with the concerns of my state that's actually facing some severe uh, climate impacts, uh, just as we speak with uh, wildfires um, and um, our colleagues and, and fellow Americans in Texas and the impact of the hurricane. I wanted to uh, pull in your um, sort of thoughts about the Fed pilot on the climate scenario exercise. Um, in May, the Fed conducted a pilot uh, climate scenario exercise and asked the six largest U.S. banks to examine their balance sheets um, and how it would be effective if a large hurricane hit the Northeast. They reported uh, facing data gaps on property characteristics, their uh, counterparties and in insurance coverage. Um, how does the Federal Reserve intend to invest in expanding the modeling resources for banks that are going to be that are implementing climate related uh, financial disclosures? So we haven't made any decisions on what to do with that information or whether to repeat that exercise. T to your point, it was really a learning exercise. You know, how are banks thinking about this um, and how are they modeling it and, and how does it how does it work? Really? It's, it's a very, very challenging thing to model. And so that was really the nature of this exercise. In terms of disclosures, you know, we don't really have a uh, – that's not really our, our job. That's really the SEC. So, um, but, you know, we're, our, we don't have a big job on climate, but what it really is is to make sure that the institutions we regulate are aware of and understand the risks that, that they run, including risks from climate. And that, and that they're pre – Prepared yeah. um, and 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 learning how to learning how to as a, as would be the point of a pilot learning how to mitigate those risks uh, over over time. So what how, what criteria will you use to evaluate whether or not you would run the exercise again and or share the more broadly the the results of that exercise? I think we did publish well most of the results of that exercise. So I I don't know what to, to say about that. We're we're looking at it and we're asking ourselves. What did we learn? What do we need to learn next time? Um, so, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what, what factors we'll be looking at, but we'll be doing a, a careful assessment of what more we need to do.